Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome to a new review of the latest album from Fly Pan Am titled Ceci. Before we dive too deep into the album, let's talk about Fly Pan Am, the band. Fly Pan Am released their eponymous debut album back in 1999 with very interesting reception. This band was very unique in the era of post-rock of the 90s. You had bands like Slint releasing Spiderland in 1991. Of course you can't talk about post-rock without talking about Talk Talk Laughing Stock or the impressive soundtracks for the blind by the band Swans, which was at the time their last studio album. And of course, almost the godfathers of post-rock, or at least the poster childs of post-rock, Godspeed You Black Emperor with F Sharp A Sharp Infinity. These are bands that are known for their post-rockian sound that have basically caused waves in rock music that span even until today with bands like Explosions in the Sky, This Will Destroy You, etc. Fly Pan Am was never really one to excite. Fly Pan Am wasn't really an album that was as critically acclaimed as the rest of the albums that I just said. While Fly Pan Am was an interesting album, it was such a left field album for post-rock. It was such an off-kilter album for the genre. It just didn't fit well into post-rock, but it definitely fit well into the annals of experimental rock. But I genuinely think that this is such a wildly different album than all the other post-rock albums that we saw, which incorporated themes of jazz and long, drawn-out musical passages and mainly guitars, while well, this thing dealt with more electronical stuff. But you also can't talk about post-rock being a little less rock than a little more electronic without talking about Sigur Rós with their very, uh, very interesting album that I can't pronounce the title of. It's an interesting listen, it's more cerebral than anything, but nevertheless, that's also another post-rock album that was critically acclaimed back in its heyday. But Fly Pan Am has always been an album that I kind of look at and I'm like, what were you? What was this album in the context of every other post-rock album that was coming out? It was just a, such a different album but it was unique in its time, and I think that's where Fly Pan Am flourished. They flourished in their uniqueness. They flourished in their obscurity and experimentation. That's where they thrived. And that leads us to their comeback album, a 15-year hiatus from the band from 2004 to now. This is a very interesting album for the band because it's not a return to form. Rather, it is almost like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. It's that different from what they released back in the 90s and early 2000s. They take experimentation up to 11 on this one with more themes of psychedelic rock and more experimentation with electronics than any other album preceding it. This is an album that I anticipated to be interesting, but I did not anticipate this album at all. This is an album that I was absolutely floored by because when I listened to it, I was just, I was shocked. Is this Fly Pan Am? Is this actually Fly Pan Am? This is the band Fly Pan Am, the same band that released their debut album. This feels like a new form for the band, a new era for the band, a new sound for the band that's quite invigorating and enthralling. We start off with the first track, which is bravely titled Avant-Garde Vo, I believe, which is literally this one minute experimentation bit, which starts off the album on an interesting note. I really genuinely thought this was going to be an album of just pure experimentation, but no, with the next track, Distant Dealer, they showed their true shoegazian forms. Like a post-rock band is making shoegaze music. I, look, I'm not one to talk about previous bands and their previous albums and all of this stuff, even though I just listed off like 10 post-rock albums. But the thing I will say is I don't like when people compare newer albums by artists to their older material saying, well, it's not X, but it's still good. I don't like those kind of comparisons because it really kind of just 
blocks out any creative processes that other people have just because it's not X, it's Y. I don't see this as, oh, it's not another fly Pan Am. I see this as, wow, this is another album by Fly Pan Am that's exciting, that's invigorating. I think it's even more exciting and invigorating than the debut. I didn't know what to expect from this album, but when I first heard that first track, holy hell, I was in for a ride. Distance Dealer is, again, a shoegazing kind of song. It's practically soaked in reverb. It was dipped in like Achilles. You also have a lot of chaotic noise on this album, with the next track, Bleeding Decay, which has these very chaotic drum passages and a lot of guitars. It's all over the place, but in such a good way. It's chaotically entertaining and absolutely enthralling. Dizzy Delusions is one of three interlude tracks of the album that are basically just pure psychedelic experimentation. The other two being the first track off of this album, Alienage Centrophy. Now these tracks are very experimental. They're very complex to kind of dive into. Basically, it sounds like um, an acid trip. These like warbly synths permeate the entire tracks. They're loud in your face. They are bold. And of course they do incorporate the shoegaziness that this entire album also has, but these long drawn out almost drone pieces that are just like a minute, they definitely entertain within that short time span. It's exciting, yet it feels satisfying because it's not so long, yet it's not too short to not be enjoyed. And while a lot of these songs are soaked in reverb, you can definitely hear the different instruments that are being played throughout each track. Certainly it does take a little fine tuning to kind of notice the changes, but nevertheless, everything still feels coherent. It feels complacent. It feels really well thought out and very well put together. You also have the band singing on a good amount of songs on here. Each Ether, Distance Dealer, and even shouting on the last track of this album, and I mean like screaming. And these lyrics for the first time in the band's history are actually spoken in English as well as the titles. This is the first album that's actually nearly completely English other than the album title. So not only a stylistic change in the band's sound, actually a literal change in the language that this album speaks to. This album isn't all butterflies and rainbows though. There is certainly a couple things that I have a couple, you know, gripes about that I have, you know, problems with. One, sometimes the guitar passages can be very similar from one song to the next. Even though it's not something I hate, it's a little redundant. Two, there is a dud in the track listing in my opinion, the song One Hit Wonder, is uh, it doesn't live up to the exciting hype that the other tracks do. But I don't think there's anything else other than that. This is an exciting album, it's an invigorating album, and it's extremely enthralling. I am completely enamored with this album. It exceeded my expectations. It, like, my bar was here, and it went to the moon. It was absolutely incredible. From front to back, I thoroughly enjoyed a bulk of what's on this album, and I certainly hope this is in my year-end list. I'm proud of what Fly Pan Am has put in this album, and I am absolutely excited for what's next in store for the band. Nothing else I could really say. I'm... <laughs> I'm giving this album an A. Yeah. A very light A, though. A very light A. Yeah. I mean, it's a great album. I like it. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this album down below. Let me know what albums you want me to review next. And that is it. Leave a like, comment, share, do whatever you want. Fly Pan Am. Cess Sa. Until next time.